how it has been with you concerning the heat. When it started raining yesterday, I said, wow, the heat is going to come down. But who's I? I don't know if you share the same thing with me, but it's been so. But we thank God. Hallelujah. Please welcome your neighbors once again and say, neighbor, you are welcome. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I want to believe we all have the new teaching outlined, preparing for greater exploits, one. Preparing for greater exploits, one. Somebody say greater exploits. Hallelujah. Introduction. The scriptures are full of examples of people who fell short of God's expectations and plans because of their non-preparedness. Don't forget that exploits means something brave or interesting that someone has done. And some people do not prepare for this something that is brave, something that is interesting. But by the grace of God, this teaching is coming to us so that if we are not prepared before, we'll prepare now. And if we have been doing exploits before, we now begin to do greater exploits. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke 19, 41 to 44. He said, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Why did Jesus weep over Jerusalem? Why did he weep? They were not prepared to see the Messiah. And the guy came out and wept. Oh God. Oh God. These people, they don't even know what they have. Like some of us, many a time, we don't know what we have until we lose it. But may that never be your portion in Jesus' name. Verse 42, it says, saying, if thou had known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. For the days shall come upon thee that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round about, round and keep thee in, on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. They didn't know. Somebody said that poor is not that you don't have money. To be poor it does not mean that you don't have money. To be poor also means that the time of your visitation you fail to recognize. But Paul, P-O-O-R, stands for, stands for a passing over opportunities repeatedly. Passing over opportunities repeatedly. So if we don't take care of the time of our visitation, the time of opportunity, we might just miss it. But that will never be our portion in Jesus' name. So, in other words, preparing for greater exploits means that one should pray like we have been told to pray repeatedly, but one should be observant so that we will not miss the time of our visitation in Jesus' name. Verse Psalm 126, verse 1 says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Hmm? Is it true? Hmm? Is it not true? Praise the Lord. Being like them that dream. It will be like a dream, but then it's a reality. So we should get ready. Acts 12, 7 to 25, we'll just dissect it. I will not, will not be able to read all. Verse 7 says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Rise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Peter thought that he was dreaming. He didn't know it's a reality. Verse 8, And the angel said unto him, Guide thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, 
cast thy garment ab about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he was, he, that he saw a vision. He thought he saw a vision. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. He didn't know. He thought that it was a dream. He knew that, that uh, Peter used to dream. He used to see visions. So he thought that it was one of it. He didn't know that the angel of the Lord has come to deliver him. We go on, verse 12 says, And when he had considered the things, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to Hakim named Rhoda. And when he knew, when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad, that is, you are mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Meaning that they were praying. They gathered to pray for him because he was in the prison. But they didn't, be they didn't believe. The only person that believed was Eroda. Who went to the door and saw that, saw, heard, her voice, heard his voice and said, yeah, it's Peter. And went back to them to say, it's Peter. They say, you are mad. They were praying, you know. Praise the Lord. You, you have heard now that um, a, a, a set of people gathered together to pray for rain because they had not been rain for, for a while. And why they gathered to pray for rain? Only one child, a child, went there with umbrella. Meaning that others just went, they wanted to pray for rain, but they didn't believe. The child believed that since we want to pray for rain, if rain begins to fall, I should see something to hold on. Are we prepared for greater exploits? We shall receive all and get set for greater exploits in Jesus' name. Amen. To say that preparation time is not lost is an understatement. It is an essential time. Preparation time is an essential time indeed. Esther 2, verse 12, and Daniel 1, verse 5. We see that Esther, they prepared her and the rest of the people for, let's see the number of time. Esther 2, 12, he said, Now, when every maid turn was come to go into the king Hazarus, after that, she had been 12 months, according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purification accomplished, to wit, uh, six months with oil of mar and six months with sweet odors, just to go and see the king, just to go and meet the king. Six months you rub this, another six months you rub that, before you see, see the king. Praise the Lord, preparation. And so it was also with Daniel, Daniel 1.5. He said, and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years, hmm, three years, they nourished them, they prepared them for a king's assignment, preparation. So preparation time is never lost, and may we never lose it in Jesus' name. Preparation is the great link between vision and preservation. Between vision and preservation. Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2 verse 3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So when the vision is there, it's for an appointed time. What is vision? Vision is an idea about, about what something will be like what something will be like. So we are seeing here that where there is no vision, you don't have an idea of something that will be like, then something is wrong. People perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And we will keep it as God has said, 
and we shall be happy in Jesus' name. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. Okay, we have read that. We are reading before the Habakkuk 2, verse 3, for the vision is so, is yet for an appointed time. An appointed, when that time comes, when the appointed time comes, will you know the time of the visitation? That's why the teaching is important for us not to miss the time of our visitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Chronicle, First Chronicles 12, 32. He said, And of the children of Isaac, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. The, the, the children of Isaac, they had understanding of the times and the wisdom to know what to do. And the rest of the people of Israel, they were their commandment. Despite their small number, they ruled the rest. Why? They had a vision. They had understanding of the time, having vision and having mission. We will come to that. Hallelujah. And because of that, power was in their hands. Praise the Lord. An exploit is an extraordinary performance. A feat, extraordinary performance. No wonder Daniel 11.32b says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. And we are now talking about greater exploits. You will not just do exploits, but you shall do greater exploits in Jesus' name. There are, however, various kinds of exploits. We have the spiritual, we have the material, we have the physical, and we have the mental. For the spiritual, we have Luke 4, 18 to 19. Jesus was quoting uh, Isaiah 61 from verse 1 down, all right? And there he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord being upon me. And indeed, he was there. You know, remember, he just opened the place, that Isaiah 61, and he started reading. First John 3, 8. He said, he had committed sin. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Just as we saw in Luke 4, 18, the Son of God was manifested, was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So nothing should hinder us at all from getting saved, from preparing for greater exploits in Jesus' name. Material. Proverbs 13, verse 22. He said, A good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid for the just. <laughs> Somebody said, you, you, you now say here, a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. Which inheritance? When I have not satisfied myself here, praise the Lord. I don't have enough. So what am I going to leave? You are leaving something. If you choose to, praise the Lord. A good man lives at, at least two things. And what are these two things? Number one is roots, and number two is wings. Praise the Lord. If you leave these two for your children, for your children's children, you have left all for them. And what is these roots and wings? Integrity, good name, foundation. You give them good name. You remember Oyen one time that a notorious arm robber. You can imagine if one son name is Oyenusi. What inheritance, no matter the amount, has he left for his children's children? Nothing. No good name. No foundation. He didn't leave them roots. He didn't leave them wings. Praise the Lord. But if you leave roots, good name, root, they will go back to it. That's why some of us still answer our 
our grandfather's name up till today. Why? The roots. And through that, we are giving wings to fly. So the left inheritance, what are we leaving for our children's children? Praise the Lord. The inheritance, roots and wings. And those are integrity, good name, and foundation. Leave that and you have left everything for them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Genesis 31, verse 1, it says, And he heard words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob had taken away all that our fathers, all that was our fathers, and of that which was our fathers had he gotten all this glory. Ah, Jacob overheard the sons, the, the, the sons of Laban, his uncle, saying that uh, everything that, uh, that uh, Jacob had is our, is our fathers. And the guy said, Che. Okay, when am I going to, to begin to work for my household, to begin to provide for my household? How? So that ignited him to begin to think well, to begin to think well, to begin to make greater exploits. And we know how it ended, that God really opened his eyes and he saw what he had to do and he did it and his stock multiplied. Hallelujah. Physical, Mark 16, verse 18. Mark 16, verse 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly things, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Don't forget where we started from. He said, these signs have followed them that believe. So, number one is to believe in who? In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, preparing for greater exploit, believe. Hallelujah. Believe. And as you believe, greater things shall follow you. And exploits will back you up always. Hallelujah. Second Samuel 3. We are still talking about physical. Second Samuel 3, verse 1. He said, Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David was stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul was weaker and weaker. What happened? Don't forget that Saul was working weaker and weaker. Why? He didn't obey the Lord. God told him to do this. He went ahead to do another thing. But David obeyed the Lord. David will always inquire of the Lord and follow God's instruction, and he was able to do exploits. May we obey the Lord and follow his instructions, and we'll be able to do exploits in Jesus' name. And what is the, what is, uh, the instruction? God's word is God's will, and God's will is God's ways. And since David was following God's word, and therefore God's will, he was able to do great exploits. And may that be our testimony in Jesus' name. Mental, Daniel 1, 17 to 20. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all vision, with all visions and dreams. And now, at the end of the days that the king has said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Don't forget their names. Their initial names before they were changed. Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. What happened? Don't forget that initially when they assembled them, 
that these people determined not to eat the king's delicacy. And they begged those eunuchs and said, just give us vegetable. They said, uh, you people want to kill me. No way, not me and you. All right, they said, okay, just try us these three days. Then check how we look at. If we look well, fine. If we don't look well, then we'll begin to eat. And after three days, the, king, the, the guy checked them. I found out that they were even better looking. He said, okay, begin to eat your vegetable at least. I'm going to increase the chop money of my wife at home because definitely he carried them to wherever, as if he had a wife. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why prepare? Why should we prepare? To prepare implies impending higher responsibilities, requiring greater abilities, knowledge, skills, attitude than hitherto displayed. First, Timothy 3, 1, he said, this is a true saying, if a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired, he desired a good work. So desiring greater responsibility, desiring greater height, desiring to be the man on top. From what he said here, it's a good thing, but he has to prepare. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto who? God. So we have to study. Study what? Study God's word. Somebody who is to lead should read. Read the scriptures. Read other books because as you are reading, you are acquiring knowledge. So he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided. Dividing the word of truth. Once you are acquainted with God's word, you will not make irreversible mistakes. When you prepare, you prepare solidly. Every step taken forward is a short step taken forever. That there shall be no looking back at all or going back. It becomes for you forwards ever and backwards never. Sometimes there are new revelations or changes in the environment that bring new challenges in their wake. New challenges might come. If you are not prepared, it will pass you by. Don't forget where we are coming from. We say that the uh, possibilities that is uh, overlooked many times that the poverty comes. But when we face those challenges and the opportunities that come our way, we find out that we begin to make great exploits. Galatians 1, 15 to 18. He said, but when he pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the hidden, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. See what he did after he got converted. He didn't just come out to say that, yes, I now follow. No, he went to cool down somewhere, to count the cost, to prepare. After preparing now, he went and showed himself from verse 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and I bowed with him 15 days. After counting the cost, after preparing, he now moved forward. May we prepare well and may we move forward shortly in Jesus' name. Praise God. Preparation efforts are not in vain at all. There are commensurate rewards as you prepare, you shall be rewarded. Second Timothy 4 verse 8. He said, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So when you prepare, definitely you will get the reward of preparation. And you shall never lose yours in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. James 1.12, he said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For where? 
For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So, get set for challenges, but get set to overcome also, because indeed the Lord will back you up in the name of Jesus. He has reward for every, for every challenge, for every trial, requirements for preparation. Number one, a vision that can translate into a mission. I'll read that again. A vision that can translate into a mission. Don't forget where we are coming from. We said before that a vision is an idea about what something will be like. And we have now seen the mission. The mission is something you feel you must do because it is your duty. So let's now read Habakkuk 2, verse 2. He said, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tab tables that he may run that reads it. He may run. So write the vision. You have seen a vision. You have a vision. You have an idea of what something will be. You write it down. Mm. And you begin to consider it and see what mission is. They like said something you feel you must do because it is your duty. So through this vision, uh, then this is what I must do. It has, become, it has become your duty. Now, you take it up. You take it up and definitely it will bear fruit. So we read that again. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. You have a vision. If you fail to write it down, you begin to say, eh, it appears that. No. But as soon as you write it down, book not a lie. Especially if you are the one who has written it. You go back to it and refresh. And make it plain upon the tables that he may run that reads it. Praise the Lord. Number two. A dissatisfaction. Don't forget what we are talking about. Requirements for preparation. Number one, a vision that can be translated into a mission. Then number two, a dissatisfaction with current situation, with current status. Are you dissatisfied? Then follow the example of Jabez in First Chronicles 4.10. And Jabez said, Jabez called on the on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. He was dissatisfied. And he faced God to bless him indeed. And enumerated how he wanted it. The end of that verse says, And the Lord answered him. The Lord will answer you in the name of Jesus. Number three. A realistic self-assessment. Assess yourself. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. According as God has dealt with every man the measure of faith. So God has dealt with us, has given us a measure. No one came into this world empty-handed. No, no one at all. Despite the fact that all children were born with their hands folded. I think they are folding their, exactly their gifts and everything that God has given to them. They said, let me hold it well. Because at the end of time, everyone goes with their hands open. Let's not go to that. Proverbs 26, 2. Sorry, 12. 26, 12. He said, See thou a man wise in his own conceit. There is more hope of a fool than of him. It might, it might sound big grammar, but let's see it at NLT. That is New Living Translation. He said, There is more hope for fools, than for people who think they are wise. Does that, bring, God, does that bring that to LCM, lowest common multiple? 
So once you begin to think you are wise, mm, watch it. You know I'm a wise man. Hey, hey, be careful. Praise the Lord. So we see number three, a realistic self-assessment of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. That is doing SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis. Matthew 25, 14 to 15. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. Every man according to his several ability. So every man has ability. The only thing is that some of us, we will leave the one that God has given to us and begin to eye another person's own. Say, can you imagine? That guy can do this, he can do this, I can do that. I will never stop talking about these people here. Some of them here, they play the keyboard, they play the guitar, they play the drum, and they play flute always. And that's only you. God, just give me a list to play flute. If I sit down, dead jelly, to begin to say only one person is playing the keyboard, he can play the jitter, the guitar, he can play the drum, he can play flute. Ha, ha, and me, I can't even play one. God, why did you do this to me? And I waste the whole of my energy in that, forgetting what God has given to me. God has, he gave everyone according to his individual ability. He is the one who made us. So if you, are think, if you think you are confused, then go back to God and say, like Jabez did, bless me indeed. Or better still, open down my eyes to behold the wondrous words in your way. To behold the wondrous things you have embedded in your way. In your word, open my eyes to know those things that are mine. You have blessed me with, so that I can run with the vision. Hallelujah. Number four, a desire to move forward in life, in ministry, in vocation, in anything. Philippians three ten to fourteen. Philippians three ten to fourteen. Paul was saying, he said, that I might know him, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his, that I may know him. He was, at the end of that verse 14, he said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I may know him. So he was pressing on Daily, not the one I will study five scriptures today, and I will not study during that uh, ten days, and then I will study one, and after one week I study ten. No, he continued to press on daily. May you press on daily in Jesus' name. Verse number five. Now, a willingness to be inconvenienced. A willingness to be inconvenienced. 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 2, verse 3, says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And of course, you see our example, Hebrews 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He did it. The Bible didn't say he enjoyed the cross. He endured the cross, despising the shame. And now he sat down. He didn't even see. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he endured. So we have to be inconvenienced if we are to prepare for greater exploits. So the next one now is essential ingredients 
of exploits. Essential ingredients. The made, the made, praise the Lord, of exploits. Exploits are not the runoff day things. No. They require efficiency, that is, doing things right, and effectiveness, that is, doing the right things. Galatians 2, 1 and 2. Galatians 2, 1 and 2. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, least by any means I should run or had run in vain. So Paul didn't want to miss it. He said, I have prepared though. But then I have to go and compare notes with those ones who have gone ahead of me so that I will not miss it at all. I will not run in vain. I will not run at miss. I will always hit target, pinpoint accuracy. That is what I wanted. And that's why he, he checked that he, he, he was efficient and he was effective. That's why he took those decisions and they really helped. Hallelujah. Philippians 2 verse 16, reading from NLT, he said, Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I'll be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. So he was looking ahead of time. Let me do right now so that tomorrow it will not be useless. I will not run in vain. I will not miss target. I will always hit target. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In order to achieve purpose. Doing this is in order to achieve purpose. Colossians 4 verse 17, reading from NLT again, he said, See to Archippus, be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you. So, like God is saying to you, now be sure you carry out the ministry that God has given you. God has given everyone ministry. Are you a child of God? You have a ministry. God has given every one of us, not some, not plenty, not many, not few. Every one of us will have a ministry. Be sure you carry out your ministry and you will satisfy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There should also be faithfulness. Be faithful. Be faithful. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 4 verse 2 from King James Version. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. NLT puts it this way. Now, a person who is put in charge as a manager, must be faithful. He brings it home. A person who is put in charge, and every one of us, we are in charge of something. Even a child born today is in charge of, in charge of something. What is he in charge of? He's in charge of crying. Praise the Lord. So wherever the level you are, you can manage up, you can manage down, you can manage across. Are you not in charge of something? So you're in charge of those ahead of you, your boss, your parents, and those over you, you are in charge. And those ones reporting to you, and those ones under you, you manage them also. And those your contemporaries also, you manage. So everyone is a manager. Then we are told to be faithful. Have you seen how open children are to the parents who are their friends? Have you seen? They can tell their parents, especially their mothers, they can tell them anything. What I mean by anything, anything that some people think that is secret, they won't tell you. They will say, Mommy, ah, see, oh, see the way I feel. Is it, am I normal so? Why? They are close. That woman has brought them up in the way of managing them well that they will be able to open up to them. 
Some children will not do that. They will go to their friends. He said, ah, you are growing up. Sooner than later, you want to do it. Especially the ladies. You want to do it and become matured. They are misled. But because he's managing them well, so everyone is a manager. And we trust God that everyone will prepare for greater height to manage whichever level we are. Up, down, across, wherever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew. So we have faithfulness. We have done that. We have humility. So we should be humble. We should be humble. King James Version 18, Matthew 18, verse 4. It says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of God. Heaven. The NLT puts it this way. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Children are humble. Children are humble. And the Bible is telling us that if we are as humble as little children, children are humble. They can forgive easily. You see a child crying just now, do any other thing, he begins to laugh. He has forgotten. Praise the Lord. The parents will spank where we now he's coming again to lie on the last side and cry. They are humble. And whoever is as humble as little children, they are the ones. They are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So be humble. Humility will take us far. First Peter 5, verse 6. He said, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. There is a, a due time. And God is, a ready, is always ready to exalt in due time. You might be in a rush to be exalted, to make it, to hit the jackpot. But yes, but the good time, the Due time has not come. Once you humble yourself, go with the tide of God, go with the timing of God in due time, you will be lifted. And you shall be lifted indeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Obedience. Obey. Obey. First Samuel 15, verse 22. And Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in bond offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Meaning that some of the things we run up and down, all we require to do is just to obey the Lord. He said, you obey the Lord, but I don't hear God's word. Ah, ah, but you have, you read God's word now. The Bible is God's word. And from where we are coming from, God's word is God's will, and God's will is God's ways. So obey what God has spoken in his word, which is his will, which is his way, and you'll find out that every other thing will begin to fall in place. Don't forget what, where we are coming from. Essential ingredients of exploits. So... We have seen the place of efficiency and effectiveness. We have seen the place of faithfulness, of humility, and then the place of obedience. Now, the place of diligence. Diligence. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Diligence. But without faith, it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. Somebody say a rewarder. A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. To be diligent is to work hard. To be diligent is to be steady, working hard on what is pleasing God. Hallelujah. So, with faith now, you'll be able to please God. 
you shall be rewarded because you'll be diligent. You'll be hardworking in those things that please God. Hallelujah. Acquiring these ingredients will involve dropping some habits inherent in the old status. So some habits should be dropped if we have to acquire these. Some habits will be dropped. First Corinthians 13 verse 11, it says, When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Praise the Lord. There are things you look back now and see that you did. Ah, you laugh. When we came into this town newly, we had a friend who was into so many things. And despite the fact that he was into so many things, he still wanted to organize some clubs. Some, uh, that is not country uh, village meetings. No, that one is no problem. But he now wants to organize another club again outside the village meeting, Parako. And, uh, you know, I look at my wife and told my wife that, yeah, he is born again, I know. But he is not really born again. Now, when he gets born again, I will know. We will know. So one day, he came to our house. Thank God my wife was around. And he said, yeah, that I'm into so many things. It's not enabling me to serve God well. My wife looked at me. I looked at my wife. We just smiled. We didn't tell him anything. When he left, I told my wife, he's now really born again. Now he's getting it. There are things you drop. There are things you drop in order to face what God has designed for you. When you carry on so many things, you will not be sharp enough to get set for greater exploits. So as a child, there is a way you do, but as you grow up, there are things you drop. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So acquiring some necessary habits, I'll repeat that, acquiring these ingredients will involve dropping some habits inherent in the old status. Acquiring some necessary habits, maturing and broadening perspective, maturing. Hebrews 5 12 to 14, then up to Hebrews 6, verse 1. I will read all that from NLT, New Living Translation. Hebrews 5, verse 12. He said, you have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. No, when they eat solid food, even if they allow it to pass, it will poke them. Praise the Lord, but like babies. He said, for someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. So how do we do to be mature? We study to show ourselves approved unto God. Hebrews 6, 1, I say, for, so let us stop going over the basic things about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely, we don't need to start again with the foundation, fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our, our faith in God. If you have passed through Christian foundational classes, definitely you have passed through this. But if you have not gone through Christian foundational classes, it's not too late. Just go there. So the time is for us to get mature. And as we are studying God's word, we are maturing. Hallelujah. Broadening and broadening perspectives. What are these broadening perspectives? First, no, Philippians 1. Philippians 1, 15 
to 18. Philippians 1, 15 to 18. Let's read that from NLT again. He said, verse 15, say, It's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry. But others preach about Christ with pure motives. Verse 16, they preach because they love me. For they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. But that doesn't matter whether their motives are false or genuine. The message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice and I will continue to rejoice. So you see now that acquiring these ingredients from where we read will involve dropping some habits inherent in the old status, acquiring some necessary habits, maturing and broadening perspective. So the things that we are doing to Paul, some of them we are doing it just to harm him. Let us make him a mad. So let's go and preach. Some people were doing it genuinely. And Paul was saying, because of his perspective, eh, if they are doing it thinking that they are hurting me, eh, they are preaching the gospel. And these ones who are preaching it genuinely, ah, they are also preaching the gospel. But some people would have just gone to put their hand on their hand and say, ah, see this, my work, see what these people are doing. These ones too, they have gone to preach. Eh, they will praise the Lord, but not for Paul. The perspectives broaden that, eh, let them go on. They are preaching Christ, Abby. The work is getting bigger. Praise the Lord. There will be a need for a larger heart, a right self-image, coping with pride, coping with power, with money, with opposite sex. There is a need to handle those and the Lord shall help us. These are things that need to be pre-settled before going in for exploit, so that you don't get into exploit and find out that you begin to misbehave. But that will never be our portion in Jesus' name. Time management. We'll just talk on it. Next teaching, we take on that fully. One of the elements that must be mastered by anyone preparing for exploits is time. Time. Why everyone is exposed to the same amount of time, what each person makes out of time determines what he gets out of life. How do you manage your time? Praise the Lord. There are time stealers that need to be taken care of in order to get the best out of our days, and we shall not miss preparing for greater exploits in Jesus' name. Shall we bow down our heads to pray? This is the foundation, and next time we'll continue on this time management, and trust, trust God that you will get everything that God has in mind in this series, and your life shall never remain the same again, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.